get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Einstein Bagels, Atari, and many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm very excited. We have Alan Osri, and he started what is now the Osri Bakery with his father in 1996 by scraping together money from family and a business loan to start a small 700 square foot sandwich shop in Canada and his brother Guy joined in also. Probably the bakery portion of that where they did production was only 300 square feet. So we're gonna compare that. So since then, they've grown into 90,000 square foot facilities supplying grocery store chains and natural food stores all over the US and Canada with their natural products. Alan, thanks for joining me. Hi, how are you? Fantastic. I, you know. This is an amazing story, and I want to start off. I always start off with the beginning. So I figured I'd switch things around and start off with now. And this week, so what's top of mind this week? What is the company working on this week? And I want to hear about what your day-to-day looks like this week, because we'll go back to when you were sweeping the floor in the sandwich shop in a second. In the sandwich shop, I had my mother sweep the floors. I cleaned the toilets. So. Okay, exactly. That's true, right? I mean, that's that's the reality of it. Someone's got to clean the toilets. Yeah, uh, we're we're busy these days. Actually, yeah. well, I'll uh, widen it a little to a month rather than a week. Yeah, probably more than that. Also, uh, working on brand change in Canada. We started our store as uh, Peter Break as a sandwich shop, and yeah. that name carried uh, until a month ago. Mm, uh, mm. About three weeks For ago, twenty years, almost twenty years, you were Peter Break. Yes, and and the name Peter Break was great for a sandwich shop. Yeah, we yeah. were uh, finding that there was a lot of confusion in understanding our brand, understanding our um, our, our uh, uh, products. Uh, a lot of times, we got calls from supermarkets complaining about another PETA company. Uh, some people claiming to know our, our, our company and start talking about all the stores that we have which do not exist. We are a commercial bakery. So we understood we have an issue with our brand. People loved the product, they knew it, but they didn't know the name. Yeah. And uh, a while back we decided to make that change and after quite a bit of work um, we, we kind of started transforming it and uh, it, uh, that, that new packaging with a new name hit the, the shelves three weeks ago while I was actually at Mastermind Talks. Wow. Yeah, so that's a huge decision, right? Because you have to change all the packaging on all your products, all the branding. So what made you decide to pull the trigger finally? Uh, we, we, we've, we wanted to make the change a few years ago. I'd say maybe yeah. four or five years ago. We yeah. were waiting for us to be stable. We, we've had a, a tumultuous uh, uh, history and, and almost went out of business a couple of times yeah. uh, because of overextending, because of competition. And uh, today we're, we're at somewhat solid grounds and we have the funds to finance this whole thing. So yes, it's very expensive. Um, we're, we're putting in a lot into it. So we felt comfortable. This is the time. We, we brought on a couple of partners uh, to help us execute this, yeah. this uh, change. And so far, uh, knock on wood, we're, we're, seeing, uh, we're hearing actually yeah. only positive comments. Um, not one negative comments, uh, and yeah. that we communicate with a lot of our consumers on a daily basis. So I'm, I'm both Guy, my brother, and, and myself are quite happy with the results so far. Yeah. So what did you discover with this brand change that you wouldn't have known without just going full out into it? Um, it's it's interesting. Well, we have been calling ourselves Ozeri's Vita Break a few years ago. That didn't cost much to okay. change. It was like a slow transition. You're like, Peter Break, then let's put Osri Peter Break. <laughs> then let's cut out the Peta and Break and put in Bakery. Yeah. And, and our logo. Our logo used to be like this running Peta. Uh, some people will miss it. <laughs> we promise, <laughs> we promise we'll I did. It. I did check out the old logo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that my ex did it and, uh, on a napkin kind of. And that, that, it went, it, it, he went a great deal, a, a long way, and uh, did a good job for us. But... Uh, it's time to change and to move on, and um, 
Yeah, I forgot the question. It's funny. Well, the what you wouldn't have known um, without going through. And I asked because so there was a fellow mastermind talk. Someone I met, Sean Fuller. We were just talking about this last week, and he's like, you know, he's making a brand change. He's like, if you have anyone coming on who's done a brand change before, have them talk about it. What should he be looking for in his brand change and be doing? Um, so what we were doing, because we're a, a product on shelf, uh, we're looking, we did make great, the changes we made were uh, our, our logo on the package yeah. and everything else, we modernized it and we think we made great improvements to the, to the design and messaging, simplified yeah. it, clarified it, but the package still looks like the older one. So if you'll see, we, we, when we look at a shelf, we, we tend to uh, walk 10, 12 feet back, mm -hmm. look, at the, look at the shelf. And do we, set, do we get the same sense? As you get closer, you start seeing details. So when you're 12 feet away from our shelf today, you get a similar sense. It's a similar company, similar mm -hmm. colors. And you get closer and you still get that sense. Only when you pick up the, the package and start looking at details, you will notice that. Um, oddly enough, some uh, bakery managers, which see this every day and handle it on a daily basis, haven't noticed the change, which mm. I don't know what that means if we... <laughs> <laughs> if our brand was that bad before, <laughs> or, or um, you know, we didn't do a great job now. But uh, I, I think it's neither. I think we, we did a good job, and our goals of keeping it close to what we had before, yet yeah. sneaking our, in our name, are kind of working for us. What were some of the hiccups, Alon, with the brand change that, that people should watch out for? Um, when it comes to packaging, uh, I won't go into details because I don't want to get my heart uh, rate going up again. Um, and, and perspiring uh, it w isn't my It was really stressful, yeah. Attractive trait, yeah. So you have a drop dead date, and all, 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 everything is set for a specific date for products to go onto shelf. You pay lots of money for uh, marketing on shelves, which happens during one week and one week only. Yeah. And, um, and it has to happen by then. And we, we have, for us, it's uh, issues of uh, registering names. It's uh, um, the organic accreditation, the GMO accreditation, the yeah. non-GMO accreditation. Yeah. There were so many moving parts. Um, and, and you have no choice. Yeah. Everything is printed on bag. Yeah. Like your one bun, for instance, has like a big purple. I remember it. Like a pur big purple organic logo yes. on it, right? Like mm -hmm. something like that. One of our bags. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So you make some changes because uh, uh, it's an opportunity to change ingredients, to upgrade, to improve things that you've held on for quite a while. And then just things happen. And um, no, uh, thankfully, we, we overcame everything. There were a stressful, I'd say, month prior to. But uh, you know how things tend to sort themselves out. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, they did in our case. Yeah. yeah. And you know, do, in my research, it shows that like, you guys really innovate. And did you guys come up with that like type of one bun um, format? Because we get that. We've gotten it. And I, I remember when we first got it. It wasn't that long ago. And you started that. Uh uh, if I start perspiring again, you'll understand why. But yes, we. I think I know what you're going to say and why you're perspiring, we, but go on. Yeah. We developed them uh, in Canada yeah. and uh, did very, very well with them. And we devoted all of our business to, to that uh, pre sliced thin yeah. buns. Nobody yeah. else in North America made yeah. them. Yeah. And if people uh, can't visualize it, it's like a circular. Well, you describe it so people can. Well, uh, we're Canadian, so yeah. hockey puck. <laughs> But a little thinner yeah. uh, and sliced, yeah. so have uh, two very thin end uh, parts yeah. Yeah. come apart, uh, which make a fantastic sandwich. Peanut butter and it's, jelly we make it with the kids, yeah. You toast it up a little, it gets hard, it firms up a little and holds things very well. You can yeah. make really, really good sandwiches. Yeah. Uh, the, the whole experience with less bread uh, was very unique at the time. And it's not long ago, you're right, I'd say six, seven years ago. Yeah. Um, Anyways, we, we had a 40,000 square foot bakery. We borrowed money to go and open this new facility, mm -hmm. thinking that U.S. is going to be, um, is, is basically uh, open territory. It's a big market for you. It's making that, yes. Yeah. Uh, six months prior to, just before we were ready to launch it in the U.S., and we were already talking to a couple of buyers. Uh, I was in Florida, yeah. and I went into a Publix. And, you know, I'm walking around happy in my tank top on holiday. <laughs> I got... 
as usual, go to the bread. Uh, right. And, and I, I, I remember seeing uh, similar products, which until then didn't exist, made by, I won't ma mention who, and um, my jaw almost hit the floor, and I was, oh my God, yeah. what is this? And I pick it up, look at it, and it's identical to our products. Mm. Um, so it turns out a Canadian company that took it to the U.S. and with much a much larger company than ours, um, uh, uh, launched it in the U.S. and did a great job about it. And uh, the, the two companies in the U.S. basically covered the entire continent, um, mm. which we were far from having those uh, abilities or capabilities of yeah. doing. Um, and, and I'd say very, very quickly they became uh, extremely popular. I was told yeah. several hundred million dollar in sales, um, which you know we could have, we would have enjoyed. But uh, in, yes. in retrospect, it, I think it, it was a good thing. Um, that almost put us out of business because we extended ourselves to a new bakery, thinking we can uh, get that business uh, quick enough. I, quick, but not, I guess not quick enough. Yeah. And. Um, that was so. That's the precise Thinban, and and we're happy to say yes. We developed it. We made it up. Uh, we came up with it. No, nobody else. And today you'll see it uh, practically at every store in North America. Yeah. Unfortunately, not all of it ours. But uh, the good thing is, after that, we kind of had to look at ourselves, look good at ourselves. We we always made products with no preservatives and right. some organic yeah. ingredients and, and yeah. the better for you products. But yeah. this kind of solidified our our brand. Because all our competition used chemicals, they needed softer products, longer shelf lives, yeah. uh, more distribution. And we said, you know what, screw this. We, we are who we are. Because um, I think with great uh, opportunities, you think you have financial windfall. People are, are, are more inclined to make those compromises to their, uh, to their uh, values. And, right. um, and, and thankfully, we didn't. And, and, and today, we are... Uh, very solid as to who we are today. Yeah. Our our one bun, which is our pre precise thin bun, is uh, I, I'd say the best seller in the natural market in the U.S. and in Canada. Wow. So we're talking Whole Foods, we're talking all the natural markets, Sprouts, yeah. really good, really good companies. Yeah. And um, and 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 we got to a good place. Luckily, yeah. that we 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 had to close the smaller bakery, focus on the big one. You know, take a mortgage on our houses uh, uh, to 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 I guess. Uh, satisfy the yeah. banks a little and uh, and we pulled out of it so yeah. um, at the end of the day it was a good experience you say that with a smile I don't know if oh, I'd say uh, it. <laughs> today, today I can smile definitely. right exactly at the time not so much is that preventable like can someone you you came up with this innovation and a uh, different type of product is there a way to preventing other people from knocking it off there are patents you can you can pull, but every little change you make will, uh, will I guess, get rid of the patent. Overcome it. Yeah, yeah, and we're not patent experts. We we like right. food, we enjoy food. Um, what we've learned from this experience and from others also is to invest in the brand. So it's all about our brand. It's about who we are, what our values are. Yeah. And are are our, our customers um, seeing? Are, are they expect? Are they getting what they're expecting? Yeah. And, and that's all we work on. Every uh, our our competition and everybody else can do whatever they want. Yeah, um, it's a free world. And today we don't get that excited about it. Um, we're solidifying our brand. We're true, honest about what we're doing. Yeah, and and we're not overextending ourselves. Um, yeah. today huge growth. I have no interest in. My brother may have that interest, but uh, that's the the beauty of our uh, us being a little uh, different. Right. So um, yes. How did you so come up with it? That was, you know, no one had done a product like that. What made you think of it? Um, I, traveling. And, and it's, that is one. We have our morning rounds, which are extremely also very innovative product uh, doing well for us. Um, so tell people what's morning. the morning rounds. Um, they're toastable grain and fruit thin buns. So okay. you'll have, so basically uh, that, that gave us a lot of growth yeah. in Canada. Um, we had a muesli bread that I saw and then the bagels and then pitas. So we kind of married all of them into one, right, right, and and you get this really tasty hockey puck again. <laughs> so, um, but much softer and, and healthier and better for you. Maybe less fiber uh, than a hockey puck, right? Yes. Um, and 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 you just you take from different areas. Uh, the precise thin bun. I was in Finland actually, um, looking being uh, looking at a uh, manufacturer, and we saw these rye buns that were sliced. 
and they were thicker and, they, and, and we said, wait, what, what if we do something like this? And we took it back to, the, to Canada and, and started playing with it and, and yeah, it, 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 the, the, the success we saw with it yeah, uh, in yeah. Canada was tremendous and that's why, hence the, the growth opportunity that we saw, but uh, at the end of the day, realized we were not quick enough. Yeah. So, Alan, I want to talk about some of the, your research, your R&D processes, developing different, you know, flavors, different products, but I have to ask first, how do you break into these grocery stores? How do you break into Whole Foods? We, um, when we started in Toronto, uh, it was very organic. Um, so, we started with our own store. People liked it natural health food shops, small better for you chains. And then when you're in the small better for you chains, the big guys are already looking at what's happening there and then they'll approach you or when you approach them, they'll know who you are. Yeah. If you're different enough and unique enough in terms of product and brand, then yeah. I think the, the, their ears would be open. Yeah. Uh, in the US, we attended a lot of shows. So we, we attend uh, five shows, two natural and organic food shows, which are massive. Uh, both both in Anaheim yeah. in the West Coast and in Baltimore on the East Coast, um, and the fancy food shows in New York and San Francisco, and then uh, dairy, deli, bakery show, and and all the buyers go there, so they they see products, and and then you try and approach the more I guess the medium to smaller chains that are open to innovation. Uh, you you find that conventional grocers, whenever they hear innovation and something new, it's like they put their hands on the ear and they they're not interested. They want it proven out. Boggles me because, yeah. but that's their that's their business model, and, right. and you know that's fine. And when they see something has, they they want to know where else. If I were a grocer, I'd say, where else is it? Not not many places. Okay, I'll try it. I want to be a leader. Um, however, most grocery stores um, would rather hear that it's doing well and only then take it. And that's the challenge for for newer uh, products to enter because these these are like. Ex- Things that expire right. to ten days—they're right. hard to manage. Yeah, uh, it's, it's not an easy market. I think yeah. we, we picked one of the hardest markets. It's to- it's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. I was watching a video of uh, on your channel, on your YouTube channel, of a girl. I don't know who that girl is, but uh, the real food, and it basically walks people through. It, it, it she goes on and says, this, "This goes bad. Here are the ways to prevent it." And I immediately thought, "This is horrible. His product goes bad." You know, so. Yeah. We, we never said we're very intelligent. But, uh, <laughs> so. Well, you know, there's barriers to entry. You know, there's, there's something to that too. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I want to go into the days of cleaning toilets for a second, but, but I always like to include a fun fact. A fun fact about you, Lon, is that you hate heights, um, but you, you've been bungee jumping. Yes. Um, I think in the last, I'd say 10 years, um, in order to grow as a as a person, yeah. um, it's boring to run away from th- things you're afraid of and look for things you love, right? Because yeah, yeah. you're like a, a rat in a in a maze, and th- that's no fun. So, I started I started doing things like that. Yeah. Uh, another example for me was I was thinking, what is what is the the food or drink that I hate the most? And coffee came to mind, and like I remember being much younger in the desert, cold. The only beverage was coffee. So you're standing there freezing your ass off. And um, I was offered coffee and I put it in my mouth and I spat it out. Like it would have warmed me up. It would have gotten my blood flow going and I couldn't do it. Yeah. So I said, okay, what's the, what's the strongest coffee I can get? And what I, I thought was an espresso. So we had an espresso machine in the office and I went over there made an espresso, put a little sugar to sweeten the, <laughs> the drink. And I looked at it and I said, okay, you are going to like this coffee. I'm going to like this coffee. Um, and then I took it and had a, dr- a swig and a drink and it wasn't bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. And the feeling after was quite good. Um, then the next day I did the same thing. Right. And after that I've been addicted. So I'm it's one example of, of the power that we have on our likes and, and dislikes and that we have the opportunity and ability yeah. to change them. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to not do things that are not good for you just yeah. because you're trying to challenge yourself. Yeah. But uh, so that hence the, the height yeah. thing 
uh, coffee and, yeah. and, and many others. Yeah, what else have you done that you were afraid of? Because coffee, you're not afraid. I mean, heights, I don't know if people who are afraid of heights could actually do a bungee jump. What else that you were afraid of that you actually um, just overcame and, and did? Uh, I was terrified of public speaking. Mm. Terrified of it. And I, I overcame that. Uh, and that today, again, it's, I don't speak that, that often. I mean, I do talk at the at a couple of uh, yeah. schools here in, in our entrepreneurship uh, yeah. departments to and, and, and uh, help, uh, help out. But um, yeah, after forcing myself to stand in front of a crowd once, uh, I, I, I enjoyed the, pro the, the, the whole experience yeah. so much. It, it was just great. Yeah. Um, I can't think of much more. What's your process for that? What's your process for overcoming fear? Because you know, like I noticed when you talked about the coffee or maybe it's the same with public speaking, you told yourself internally, Mm -hmm. I'm going to like this. What, what's your process to actually jump, go, do bungee jumping when you're afraid of, of heights? I think it's, it's the power of, it's A, the power of words. So I'm very, I try to be very careful uh, in the use of words, uh, not to say things that I don't intend yeah. um, and uh, not to say things to please people uh, and to say things that I do intend, not necessarily hurtful, then I just don't say anything. But the words that do come out for them to carry weight, yeah. um, and then it comes back to you, right? So it's also that that's externally um, when it comes back to who we are. It's I'm I'm saying these words to myself, and do they carry any weight? So I believe that just uh, talking to uh, where oh, a great example. Okay, so I've been having some issues with some headaches and stuff uh, a few months ago, and I went to this acupuncturist. Yeah. And she started, and she's a, a Chinese medicine acupuncturist. I don't know if you know the difference. There, there's acupuncture you could do that doesn't hurt that much. Yeah. And there's acupuncture that just, oh my God, it goes <laughs> challenge your every, every cell. Tremendous pain. And she seeks the pain because that's where she finds the release. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess. Um, so I do it. That's a I good quotable. Seek the pain so you can find the release. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could call it in many ways. You could take it in many ways. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So to, so today I will go. I go once a week, and um, I tell myself that it's a. I, I tell myself it won't hurt. That doesn't help that much. But what <laughs> I do. So the next step is visual, visualization to overcome that fear. Because yeah, I mean, yeah. it doesn't make sense almost to do it. I, you do see results, but not immediate. Right. So we don't get that. It's not a quick fix. Connection yeah. between this is what you do and this is your this is what you benefit from. You can. This is a little further from that. Um, so a visualization, another is to, so I visualize myself lying on the bed and uh, her doing it and myself standing away from it. And the moment I did that, I understood again the power. This was just another example of suddenly the level of pain that I was experiencing diminished, I'd say, by more than 50%. Wow. So the ability to almost just visualize myself out of it and mm. it's not done to me it's done to me over there or to that mm. body over there Interesting. Uh, it, it's, it's very powerful yeah I guess you could uh, use it in many ways but uh, yeah. that's, that's how I use it yeah thanks for sharing that that's interesting um, so go back to where'd you grow up uh, I was born in Toronto okay to a, a father who's uh, of Israeli Yemenite Jewish descent right um, and a mother uh, who is English and very was very English, and they met in Toronto, and Toronto brings uh, people together. And then we moved at an early age back to Israel, mm -hmm. uh, where we grew up, uh, being a lot in England and Canada, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and then came back at 16 to Toronto. So what was it like growing up in Israel? Um, good. It's a, it's, it's a, a country just like any other country with... Uh, a little more, a uh, few more stories, but uh, yeah, it was great. You run in the fields, you eat fresh food. Um, our Yemenite family uh, was all about food and baking bread. That's where I learned to make pita. That's where my love to dough that is rising slowly and the smell and the scent that 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 dough brings and the actual baking, uh, the, the 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 scent that brings people together right. to. To, to the uh, literally to the kitchen yeah. and grab and eat and, and laugh, um, it's a very uh, it's it's a great memory and um, I think that was a great uh, influencer on on going into the bakery business. 
Today, bread gets such a bad rap. I mean, with many, uh, with the gluten-free yeah. uh, thing, and and pe I think people, I think, I I don't think I know we'll get over it. I know bread will come back. The healthier versions, without the chemicals, the naturally, um, the naturally made breads, they bring people together. There's a satisfaction and happiness that bread gives me. Um, and, and, and I think gives a lot of people, and avoiding it, it doesn't make any sense to me. I remember when meat was all the, like, you wouldn't eat red meat, or eggs were terrible for you, or coffee was terrible for you, and today they're all on the must-do list, right? So I, I think uh, bread is soon getting, I, I already see the leveling off the sales of the gluten-free breads, which makes no sense to me, because um, they're not really breads. But they do, I guess, cater. I'm not talking about people who really can't eat bread. I'm talking mm. about everybody else who thinks it's not good for them. Uh, but I, I see it coming back. I see bread coming back. And there are great breads out there which are naturally made and, and um, with time. And they may cost a little more. But um, I think we'll do okay. Yeah. We're, we're doing good now today also. So, Alan, what did you, at that time, what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, I love people. I'm shy. I'm very shy inside. So um, talking for pe with people, small talk is hard. But serving somebody something or being having a, a job to do, um, mm. I, I like. So you get the interaction and you overcome the shyness. Uh, so I thought a store, a hotel, something like that. Because uh, I remember I read somewhere you when before you started the you know the company Peter Break at the time. You were doing hospitality, right? Yes. Yeah, I studied at uh, Ryerson in Toronto, uh, University Ryerson University, and I did hospitality with business. Yes. Yeah. So tell me about the leap into your own business. Um, like I said at the beginning, you started it with family money. How hard was it to get that money together? And what did you actually say to your family members to actually have them invest? Because that's a big, big decision. Um, well, I went to Ryerson and I wrote the business plan for the sandwich shop yeah. there, and it was it, it was a, a great class. Uh, you didn't have to attend class; you only had to attend the first class and the last class. Okay. The whole goal was to write a business plan, and there was a three hundred dollar uh, prize at the end of it. So whoever uh, gets uh, voted uh, the, the best uh, business plan gets a three hundred dollar, uh, I guess, in cash. Right. So I, I didn't do that well in, in school or university, but in that class, I happened to, I, I did really well. Yeah. I, uh, and my, my business plan was voted in as number one, wow. which was great drinking money. So, uh, <laughs> and, um, so that, that, that's when the business plan was written. I went and got some more experience in food industry. So from age 16, um, I worked in, as a dishwasher in a deli, and then I was a meat cutter in a deli, and then uh, I managed a counter. And then I decided to go to Canada's Wonderland, which is a th huge theme park up here, and got experience in a restaurant. And then I became an area manager in the food department. Mm. So all that was great preparation. Yeah, you had a lot of experience. Yeah. It's not like you just jumped into a sandwich shop not knowing anything. No, I've never done it myself. But the food elements of it, I, I, I made sure I have that experience, yeah. uh, including the managerial experience. So... Um, I finished university, I had 20 something, 20 odd thousand dollars uh, in debt. And I said to my father, I really, I can't see myself working for anybody. And uh, I really want to open the sandwich shop. Here's a business plan. And he was amazing. He's, he was 61 at the time. We were not wealthy. Uh, we didn't have, he took the only $50,000 that he had, mm. <coughs> him and our mother. And uh, he put it in it and said, let's do it together. Wow. Uh, and, you know, obviously, sure. He had business experience, and uh, we we found a location and and test made the pitas and. So it was just that it was just he read it and he's like, let's do this. There was no. He's uh, he's an amazing person. Yeah. He's uh, 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 an eternal optimist, mm -hmm. and um, he had faith, and we were backing up with action. So yeah. that seemed to work for us. I'll tell you, I didn't sleep for. Then we we went and we got a hundred thousand dollar small business loan. Right and. and I was, I, I honestly didn't sleep and I worried for the first year because to me the retirement was on yeah, my shoulders. Yeah, And for sure. even though he worked, he worked there um, and, and at the end, he, not the end, after a year or two, he came every night at 7 p.m. because our sales of pitas grew and grew and grew. 
He came at 7 p.m., worked all night. At 5 a.m., I would come in. Wow. We'd pack the, the products. He'd go home on his way, drop a couple of uh, 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 store deliveries. I would go on my route, come back, do the catering orders of the morning, wow. come back at 12, do the lunch rush, and then etc. My ex-wife, who's amazing also, uh, was part of that also. She worked as a waitress in uh, the Four Seasons Hotel, but she, we made sure she works there uh, until a month after we opened to make sure we have people uh, coming to the store. And only then did she quit and then join uh, the store. So, so what you start? What were the what was the staffing like in the beginning? It was you, your dad, me, and my dad, um, a sixteen-year-old guy named Craig, who I worked with at Canada's Wonderland, who today, by the way, does our uh, manages our distribution. Wow, <laughs> he's not a young man anymore. Yeah, um, yeah, and one more part-time person. Yeah, my ex, who joined us quick after, and yeah, that's how we started. That is unbelievable. So. Your dad worked through the whole night. He did. At 60, then it was 62, 63. When, when our business grew, it grew a little. Uh, we, our sales increased a little. And we, were, uh, we saw, we never thought we could sell our products at the price we, we sold them. At the time, all the pitas in the market were selling at about 99 cents um, for very thin products, uh, Lebanese style, which are great pitas for what they are, but they were 99 cents. We were s- selling ours at 229 so they were a different product they were all natural we used different grains they were thicker uh, but we never you know didn't register that we could sell them mm-hmm. until we actually tried that and they started there was a demand for it a uh, great demand um, and it was kind of again we grew organically from there and from there we I remember two years into the store we we're doing some catering a lot of business at the store but still the amount of energy we put into the business wasn't yeah. worth uh, what like we took 24 out. Twenty-four hours a day. <laughs> Twenty-four hours a day. We had to close Sundays and yeah. we had to start yeah, taking breaks. Yeah. But then it was what's next, and um, this guy, a customer, and I loved our customers. I miss our customers. Uh, very successful young man. He he I was talking as I, I was cleaning the 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 window outside, um, and he was standing eating his sandwich, talking to me. I was contemplating, should we go into catering? Should we open another store? Or should we go into wholesale baking? Right. So he said, Alon, catering I already knew. I hit, like shortened my life because you promise four, four customers you'll be there at 11 <laughs> for their lunch. You know you won't be able to do all of it, but you do it anyways. And right. at the end of the day, they're okay. But the stress levels for me it's were... It's a lot. Too, yeah. yeah. And uh, another store, it was, okay, we're going to have minimum wage plus uh, uh, employees represent our brand without us being there. That was a challenge. Like, it's done, and many stores do it, but it was a challenge. Yeah. And he said, Alon, you, you go into wholesale. It will be harder to get in, but once you develop a brand and once you're there, it would be a much better business model. Yeah. And, and I think since he made that comment, and very smart guy, Jonathan, um, I look thing, at things as models and look at models and how much you put in, what can they give out, right, and, right. and if they make sense, will I approach them? Otherwise, it's kind of, yeah, it's great, but um, I'm not interested. Yeah. I mean, so a lot of early on, though, what's interesting is a lot of businesses go out of business. They don't do well. So at what point, it seemed like you guys were having so much demand where you were working around the clock. Where did you hit a point of getting that traction that you're, I mean, too much business obviously is, is a good problem to have. Um, our, our issues at the beginning were not charging enough because yeah. we made everything from scratch. Yeah. Everything we had on our counter, the hummus, the dressings, the salads, the grilled stuff. Ev- Sounds the great. Beds, yeah. everything. It's great and it isn't. I don't know if I do the same. Right. I would choose a certain, a certain the, 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 the most important elements to be uh, made in-house. Right. Um, but that was what, so, and we didn't charge enough money, and uh, so we, we were successful, but we didn't, th- there wasn't enough compensation for the work that went in, mm-hmm. but it seemed to have mm-hmm. worked for us. Uh, today, today we charge, today I'd say we're, we're not expensive, but we're not the cheapest product out there mm-hmm. either. What was the, you know, what's interesting early on um, from, from reading the history is even from the beginning, you were all about healthy ingredients and natural ingredients, and that seems obvious now. But back then, not so obvious. No, what, far, far. what made you decide, made that conscious choice? Because it's also more expensive to do, and they go bad quicker. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Talk about that decision and it, why. 
at first it wasn't a conscious choice. At first is when you make fresh product and you eat it, you don't need chemicals. You don't need softeners, stabilizers, uh, enhancers of all sorts for the process or for God knows what or for nine day shelf. Who needs that? You eat it. So that's how we started making our products. Yeah. And, um, and then we, we started selling it to stores and we were like five day shelf life and like it was, it was terrible. <laughs> Even today, our products have a much shorter shelf life than our competition. Uh, we just serve the stores more often and uh, we're there more often, which is, you know, an advantage and a, and a des disadvantage. And you mentioned it earlier, it's, I guess it creates uh, barriers of entry. Uh, it's harder to do what we do. Yeah. Um, but but uh, I'm very sensitive to a bunch of foods and the chemicals especially. Yeah. And um, we don't want stuff. We don't want that stuff in our products. Yeah. So what's the R and D process like? How often are you coming up with new products? Um, it's a very organic process, and I think it, at first it was mostly myself. Um, yeah. I'm very. It's, it's it's either you have it or you don't. I yeah. think. Um, Today we have a great uh, R&D developer uh, uh, manager who joined us. She's amazing, uh, Aneta, and um, Erolan, who's part of our team. Um, I think part of the, the process is to have a lot of fun, to think differently, so not to be in, in office or yeah. uh, work environment the whole time. We go out, we drink, we eat, we laugh. We were in California for a food show. We drove around, we went to restaurants. Um, you get ideas, you get excited about things, <coughs> and then you go and try it. Um, you give, uh, you have to have open eyes. You have to look at things not as they are, but just notice them. And because there, you can always take elements from different things and right. apply them to, to a bread or to whatnot when it comes to development. So, our issue today is not, our, our, our development is not an issue. Our issue today is if we develop something new and exciting. Yeah it's successful, we're screwed because we have to buy, build a whole line that can supply the whole country. And that's kind of uh, uh, limits our ability to uh, develop. And it's funny because Guy and myself, my brother and I are, are very different. The, the beauty of it is today we are a medium-sized bakery here in Canada and the US. Uh, my brother is able, he created the systems and the flow and, and in an amazing way and the, the equipment which is state of the art to our, to our process, custom made, right. slow, slow, slow baking, slow everything. Um, so if it was just me, I would probably have a very successful stall in the market. So I'd be uh, and, and, and selling every day and, and having all that excitement and great product, but I wouldn't uh, be able to touch as many people, mm -hmm. our product. And the combination of my brother and I gives us our ability to sell our products, uh, which I think are very, like they're tasty and they're good and they make you happy um, everywhere across North America. And, and, um, and that's fantastic. So um, tell me what is um, the latest, most popular product? And then I want to hear about how you created it. And then, like you said, it's a pain to actually, once you create something successful, then you have to create the whole line to produce all that. What was the, what's been the latest, most popular product that you have? So, I, I really like two things, and they're still not out there completely, but we have a really nice, really nice olive oil cracker. Um, mm. it's, so, it's, again, I, I, we, have, we haven't created any new families because we're so busy with what we have right now, uh, which is kind of a shame, but it's what we have. Uh, the olive oil cracker with multi seeds in it, so it's with sesame seeds, flax seeds, and black onion seeds. Really, really nice flavor. Uh, mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And our new, uh, new-ish uh, morning round um, that is uh, date and chia. So mm. we the chia seeds, uh, uh, which are amazing, and dates from the Middle East uh, in a in a whole grain bun. Uh, really nice combination of products, um, and they're and you know, they're getting out there now slowly. So the date and chia, how hard is that to launch out to the market? Considering I know you have like five other different or four other different flavors um, or kinds, is that equally as hard or is it less hard because it's the same kind of infrastructure with the different ingredients with the cranberry, or, uh, sorry, with the date and chia? Um, I, I think you need to look at it in two ways. One, it's, it's easier to make 
but it's harder to get people to taste it because they're used to their their and then it's just it's a fourth out of three right. or it's a fourth uh, instead of three right. or instead of one so yeah um, it's easy to make harder to get people to taste but you have to I mean you do rotations and sometimes uh, get people to taste it and um, it does it does well the, whenever if we need a new family of products and we have a couple of new ideas again it, it yeah. will take we, we may need a new building and I don't want a new building right now <laughs> Your brother was like, "Let's buy a couple more buildings." My brother has the plans in the drawers, in his drawers, and I'm not, I don't want to look at them yet. So when you say a new family, like like crackers, since you haven't done, you don't have a cracker product that would be considered a new family. Well, we have a lavash cracker, which is a form of a cracker. So okay. they're elongated, um, dry crackers. Mm, like the flat is it like flatbread crackers. type crackers. Yeah. Yes. And we do have a line of that. Um, so to make a smaller one is almost a similar process again. Um, so yeah, new family all together. When when we are really bored <laughs> and have uh, funds to do something like so that. So what's the best selling product right now out of everything? Most popular? I'd say the the precise thin buns are have really there. done well for us. Um, even though they were second to market in the U.S., but today they're doing really well because they're natural and. Uh, and tasty. Uh, our morning rounds are doing amazingly. They're, they're such a good um, snack or, or food for warming up in the morning and, and grabbing it and eating it and being nice and wholesome. Kids love them, parents love them, and they're just really neat. Um, they're doing really well for us also. So I want to talk about some of the growth milestones. So you started off, like I said, in that 700 square foot sandwich shop. What was the next growth? For, we yeah yeah so about three years after we said what's next and after that talk with a guy we decided to go wholesale mm. and uh, we rented a uh, four thousand square foot uh, bakery not bakery empty hall uh, or warehouse uh, not far from our father and start and bought a bunch of equipment you had to we, build everything out you have to do everything from scratch there we well yeah and we had no clue about. I mean, we were making them at the store, which is like making them at home. Um, and then going in, in industrial is a completely different process. Yeah. Uh, the equipment is completely different. We yeah. bought mostly used equipment because we didn't have money for new. And some of it didn't work properly. The oven, for instance, um, was giving a terrible product for a few months. And I was just not knowing what to do. You're looking at ingredients because everything changed. So you're looking for what, what is, in, what's making them so bad. And we're selling them, and I didn't want to even deliver them to the stores because, but we have no choice. Uh, but very quickly discovered this. You know, looking at gas pressure, so it was an oven from the Middle East, and there they use propane, which is high pressure uh, uh, gas, and here it's natural gas. And then so we just had to compress it and condense it and change the process a little to give us the same um, product. A lot and of experimenting. A lot, and yeah, it's uh, it's it's it was hard. It was hard, and then uh, and then a lot of labor because we put stuff into a sheeter and put it on on trays and let it sit, and then put it in another thing and let it sit. Um, only when our one of our suppliers, a really great guy, who had uh, I guess extra line time on his uh, end, and he said, "Guys, let me make you an automatic line based on your criteria," uh, and and we said, "How will we pay for it? We don't have money." He said, "Just pay me monthly." And he said, sure. So he built the line, no down payment. And so what really is building the line? What, what's entailed? So here? it's an automatic, it's a, a line that would take products from the divider rounder and it will travel and then it will fall into a sheeter and then travel and then yeah. go into the oven. Um, Before it was manual, you were doing all yeah, that manually. 100%, yeah. yeah. So, and that then was the huge. Moment, massive. That, that is when we started seeing some money. Um, we let go, and for well, we didn't really let go because we grew in, in and, and we could w employ those people elsewhere. But ten, ten people did, were not needed in that specific area, and this line did it. And we paid our, we paid for that line like within I don't know, a year. Um, and then we understood the power of automation because we're not. This wasn't our background, uh, industrial baking. So, and then we got another four thousand square foot. And attach attached attached to the existing one. Oh, really? And then we started with the lavash crackers and got another four thousand square foot. Um, and then a couple of years later, we moved to a forty thousand square foot bakery and 
filled up that capacity pretty quickly. So you went, the biggest jump, was it 8,000 to 40,000? 12,000 to 40,000, yes. Wow. Um, but we were at, at capacity 24 you were. Yeah, One line, and then we moved to two lines and three lines and got to capacity at 40,000 square feet and then wanted to take America by storm and got the 90,000 square feet and then we, uh, yeah. Talk about, Alan, at the 12,000 square feet. What got you to capacity? What were you... You know, because because there's two there's a lot of moving parts here, right? There's there's the product side, but then there's also the marketing and the selling side. What got you to the capacity from the marketing and selling side when you were at the twelve thousand square foot and you reached that capacity? So our our philosophy when it comes to products is not to create a me too product. We yeah. we want to be unique, uh, not unique for the the sake of being unique, but to be amazing, awesome. Because it's better. That's the product. Because it's tastier. Because it's better because it's more interesting. And um, so every time we created a product, it was an organic growth. And then another chain would want us because they saw mm -hmm. it elsewhere and tasted it and liked it. And so did the end consumer. So it was organic. It wasn't even 100%. you reaching out to, oh, we yeah. want to get in this one. Let's reach out to them. It, it was well, more organic. we reached out, but yeah. it wasn't uh, that, 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 that them approaching us, wanting our products. Because we were dealing with all these, as you said, moving parts, and especially with manufacturing because we didn't have the experience with that. Um, and thankfully, at that time, Guy joined us. So that's, again, a while back. How'd you, did you convince him, or did he want to come on his own accord? He, well, he, he, when we just moved to the 4,000 square foot bakery, he came, uh, he, he put some money into us. He, was, he had some money saved. Uh, again, we needed it for the expansion. Yeah. So what but was he doing at the time? Um, he did everything, and he kind of worked for no money for about a year. Yeah. I mean, pre previous well, to you, like, what was he doing outside? He was, he was in Israel, and then, oh. and, then, and then he came to Canada. Got it. Um, and put the only money he had, which was, again, $50,000. Like, no pressure, uh, Alan. <laughs> well, at that time. You're about to have a heart attack, like, I mean, with all the yeah, stress. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure, yes. Yeah. But again, you, you do the best you can. I think that people are divided into two. You're, those who pressure freezes them and those that pressure makes them better. Yeah. Um, when there's pressure, I thrive. Yeah. Uh, it's not the healthiest always, but they definitely perform very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, so, so he put in 50000 and came. Put in 50, and then not only that, but worked for free for a year. And then we, we just couldn't, couldn't uh, support it because uh, we were, again, expanding slowly. He went to New York and started working at a diamond company and then started managing a diamond distributor there and was doing well. He went there for a girlfriend. And um, after a year, it was, it was my dad and I were working together and uh, we were, he was older school and, and I was less and we were having an issues. And I said, listen, I can't do it's this. It's a family anymore. business, you know, like this. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you could imagine. And, and, I was and ready he's Israeli, that. right? He's Israeli, but he's not, um, okay. he's not the typical Israeli. Okay. He's soft, softer. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, yeah. Um, so then it was, like, I was ready. I didn't know what to do. It was just so frustrating. And, and, and then we said, you know, let's see if Guy can come because we, we were making enough money for that. And we didn't know if he'd come or not because he was doing so well yeah. In, yeah. in the U.S. Um, and then within, like, within a couple of weeks, he packed up. Really? Threw everything on a U-Haul with his girlfriend came over to Toronto, wow. and, and then Guy and I started pulling the business, and our father kind of took a step back, and he's always been involved, but not, uh, not fully. Uh, he's, he now he's fully retired for a while. So was that hard to convince him at the time, Guy? No, no? no it wasn't. He, was, he was just like was, he was like... It was like he was waiting by the phone, and wow. again, he was doing really well there, so uh, we're, we're lucky. What were some of those stores that you were ecstatic that they you got that call or you were able to get into finally i mean all the big guys here uh whole foods in the u.s um costco worked great for us mm -hmm. uh loblaws here longos metro I, I i could go over which one was the toughest to get into uh you know what i don't think about that anymore you don't. Uh, no what, what i think about is um there was a chain. Okay, I'll tell you a story, and then I'll go back to what's tough. Yeah. Uh, there, there was a buyer that uh, I, I, I went in, and it was early stage, and I, I, I got his phone number. I got his name and phone number from a bakery. So this is very unprofessional. I go into the bakery area of a store, and who's responsible for this? They gave me a name and number, and this is a bigger store. 
and I took it and I called this number um, once every two weeks. No answer, no answer, no answer. And I'm, hey, da 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 da. And um, nothing. And then I think accidentally the phone was answered. And you then, mean they were, hey, they were? I was shocked. I, I didn't know what to say. I was ready. Like, for, if I, he answered a year ago, I'd be ready, but I wasn't. <laughs> so after a few seconds of silence, I said, hey, it's Alon. We have product. I'd love, just give me 30 seconds. I just want to drop off some stuff for you to try. So I, like, I left two, every two weeks messages for over a year on his line. And he goes, oh, I'm not the correct buyer. <laughs> I don't deal with oh this product. Oh, my gosh. Let me give you, let me give you the person that deals with it. And I'm, oh, God, like, do I have to do this for a year now? And then I got the And then that person's like, this isn't the right one. <laughs> and then, oh, no, uh, yeah. thankfully, uh, the other guy did answer his phone calls. And he, he within two weeks, he, we made it a presentation. He loved the product, took us in, and it was great. Um, today... Uh, we, I say it's not a store that I want to be in. It's a store that will understand our products and it's the consumers and understand its products because it's not a given that once you get into the store and yeah, products yeah. are on shelf that it sells. Yeah, you, yeah. Uh, especially in areas, I guess more in the US, it's funny, some education and some time is needed for customers to understand the product mm -hmm. um, and it just takes time. So we're not looking for just anybody. We don't want any partner. We want partners yeah, yeah. that understand, yeah, that yeah. Will, will promote it. And once they do, it will do great. So, so it's about... Of a, it's so about what does that look like today? Like who, who is that? Oh, well, well, today it's the natural market in the U.S. We're yeah. pr practically in most stores, yeah, yeah. most natural stores in the U.S. And they're doing great. Um, now we'll see. We'll see about uh, reg regular chains and yeah. we're, we're going to attempt there. And again, it's a matter of a fit. Will it work or not? Yeah. I don't know. What are, um, besides like Whole Foods and those, what's the, the fastest growing natural chains that you find? Well, uh, Sprouts is doing great. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. There are a few others, uh, but, but Whole Foods is changing so much and there's, they've been such a good partner to us. So, um, Is that change I, good or not good? Um, yeah, I can't tell you. It was moving, different departments handled products. Mm -hmm. uh, it's too early to tell. So what were you going to comment about the tough part? Anything else about the tough part? You said after that story, the tough part about getting it, uh, the toughest you know, store or toughest part or how you think of being tough getting into the stores. Well, the, uh, so that's what I just said is about the, so it's about the consumer. So mm. you, you're selling twice. You're selling yeah. to the buyer, I to see. the supermarket, yeah. then to the bakery manager that handles what actually happens, then the consumer. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're selling to two, at least two, three levels, yeah. the buyer yeah. at the office, the bakery manager, and the consumer. Yeah. And there are three different uh, mindsets, by the way. It's not, uh, I mean, when it all sells well, they're all happy, but until right. that happens... You have to uh, send different messages, uh, different, yeah, educate them differently. So, Alon, what would you do if you started today? This sounds so stressful. <laughs> would, <laughs> if you were to do something in the, the food industry, not bread, what would you get into? Um, I love food. I always say like, I really do love it, food. Yeah, it could be the food industry, uh, but not bread. You cannot do bread I, or I crackers. I would go into something, something, well, uh, uh, I, I don't want snacks because snacks I, I don't believe in. I don't like you're eating a snack, unless it's a super healthy snack, a raw mm -hmm. food thing or something that does good for you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say pre-packed, frozen, maybe uh, meal solutions, but that are like organic, healthy, natural, better for you. Um, that 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 could I yeah. think some damage could be done there. I think yeah. I think there aren't enough of those. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Frozen and that you sell less per store and all that, but you could do you could do good. Uh, there's a great uh, company called Amy's. I don't know if you know. Yeah, Amy's. yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. I, I, I admire them. They they make all their foods. I remember at the natural food shows um, ten years ago, I'd say, when you actually met Amy's parents who run the business, and you'd, they'd give pizzas. And yeah. it was amazing, amazing. Now, I was just in, in Anaheim, and I went to Emmy's. First of all, 
you cannot like the lineup was crazy. Her parents are definitely not there, and uh, I'd had no patience to stand in line to get their pizza. So they've seen tremendous success. Right. I was sorry they're this big because I didn't get to eat their pizza, and um, and they're really nice people also from what I could see. I don't know them well. I just met them a couple. Yeah. Times. So Alon, you talked about the capacity at twelve thousand, then forty thousand. What caused you to reach the capacity there? Was it just more grocery stores, more? What? Yeah. 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 Eastern Canada. So between the the morning rounds that we started, and then yeah. a couple of years after the pre sliced thin buns, um, that basically organically uh, entered the market and kind of uh, filled our our lines. When you come out with a new product, like the date and chia, right? Will those stores automatically take you? The ones that you're already in with the other product, or does it take some selling still? Um, the ones who are good partners uh, would. They really like the idea of Dayton Chia. Nobody else makes that. Yeah. And um, it's a good product. So the yeah. ones we have good relationships will try it. Yeah. Others, you have to do some, uh, some selling. Uh, but I'd say most of them took it. Today, the crackers, it takes a little, a little more. I think, I think when you're a smaller company, and I'm just realizing this, it's, it's, always, it's harder, but it's easier. So... When you're like a hotter, smaller company, you could always make anything and they'll try it um, as opposed to, and it almost has nothing to do with the product, I think, but, but it's, they, they'd look at it more, they, they'd consider it uh, rather than being a little larger company and as an addition mm -hmm. to, uh, yeah. So Why do you think? Um, they want think like the little I guy to win or what is it? No, I think it's a stands out a little more. So if, uh, if you're a smaller company, you stand out more. Mm -hmm. uh, larger, you don't as much. Um, maybe it's uh, there. They have the founder, like the 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 fire of the founder is closer to them. They feel that energy. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, I probably think that is has something to do with it too. What's the product that has the longest shelf life? This uh, short uh, shelf life thing stresses me out. I have to I tell know, you. I know. I see that. I see. It stresses me out. Yeah. Right, rightfully so. Though. Yeah. Um, the crackers. So the lavash crackers. They they have a six month shelf life. Okay. That doesn't trust me out as much. But it's still stressful because, like you said, once you sell, once it comes off your facility, comes out of your facility, how long until it gets? So you know, we, there are two methods. Yeah. Uh, we we uh, treat this, the fresh product. Uh, yeah. One is whatever is made today, tonight will be shipped out to stores yeah. in Ontario and Quebec. Yeah. As long as we have, a, I don't know, up to an eight-hour drive, we're good for fresh product. Yeah. Um, as to others, you freeze them. So we have a, a really sophisticated freezing mm. process mm. that captures the goodness in it. Uh, the quality remains the same. Um, then it's palletized, frozen, kept frozen the whole time, mm -hmm. and then shipped out to distribution centers, gets to the stores. Um, the stores, this is the, uh, 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 then defrost them and then put them on shelf. It's a very common, today, it's a very common method of uh, preserving, naturally preserving yeah. uh, breads. Um, and most of, the, most of the bread manufacturers today in the natural market freeze and then thaw off or yeah. sell it in the freezer, yes. Yeah. So, so, so that kind of uh, does help. Yeah. What is the freezing process? Is there a certain process that it's called something, the freezing process? I, I, I won't. Uh, <laughs> we, we don't. Is that, that proprietary? A few proprietary. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's not like rocket science, but uh, it's, uh, it's a method that sure. we're happy with and uh, yeah, yeah. gives us a really good product. Yeah, I was thinking like, because by the time you ship it to these stores, it's already... No, no, if it, it was only eight days, I'd say we'd be limited by a 10-hour radius. Right. Um, yeah. Obviously, I mean, we sell great in California. We sell great in... In Texas, we do amazingly well. Why is that? I don't know. They have great taste buds, I think. Yeah, so what are the, the states that do the best? California, Texas, any others? Um, I'd say California does very well. Yeah, Texas yeah. does very well. Northwest, so Portland, Seattle, that area. Mm -hmm. um, the Northeast is doing well for us also. And, you know, they're covering the whole country this way. But Chicago does very well hmm. now. We have a bunch of stores in Chicago. Yeah, but I'm sure we've gotten your products here. I'm in Chicago, yeah. I'm sure that... And we've had those breads for a long time. You you have them. I, I, yeah. I know you have them. Yeah, uh, oh, for sure. Yeah. Um... So, you know, with all this, all of it sounds difficult. And then on top of it, you're creating a physical 
product. So this is very capital intensive. Plus you're growing. How do you do that from 40,000 to 90,000 square feet? You're more than doubling your capacity. And that means also all the raw materials you're increasing too. Yes. It's, it was, uh, yeah, it was rough. Uh, well, at the same time, we, we, the market we thought was right for us was taken. They were so, right, but they just, yeah, someone yeah, 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 flooded it. Did a, took, made a right decision move and a business move and, uh, and took the market, which is, you know, I take my hat off to them. They did a, they, they did a, they, they did a good job. Um, yeah, it's hard. And and we're fully uh, we're still we we had a few times where we had we were looking for money in order to grow and expand and all but yeah. uh, thankfully it never materialized so today we're like we own the company uh, between the three of us and uh, and and we we're yeah, we're doing okay yeah so the what's the hardest part about setting up that commercial operation like when you go from forty thousand to ninety thousand what are the what are the Oh, it's challenges. massive. You can just, just first you build a, a line or two in the new place, and then you need to move existing lines. And when I say lines, these are massive metal, uh, stainless steel structures that are right. all interconnected one with another. Yeah. There are companies that do that, but yeah. Uh, yeah. A, it's expensive. B, it's the moment you change things, you know, bringing it, putting it together is a challenge. But we have great teams of people who, who took care of that. So it, it's possible, and it's, I mean, companies move. Right. And, uh, yeah, now I know it's, it's, you could do it before I didn't think you could do it. I mean, that. do you have to get a whole, like, a, a line of equipment or does it, like, an overnight thing, like, we have to move this line first into this facility and get it working? Or do you just get a whole new line yeah. and so then move the do. second line? Correct. Yeah. Is that what that's, you do? Yeah, because you, you, you need to keep uh, your, your, your uh, facility working yeah. because the fresh part, you can't build stock. You can't. Uh, right. Yeah, so so. Uh, you have to get two line, going at once. Make sure type it's of thing. working, and made sure the old ones are working, and then you move them one at a time. Yeah, Definitely. and it I, takes a month at least. Yeah, so I'm curious on what product just took off that surprised you, and then what product didn't do as well when you thought this one's going to just just flood the market and be a bestseller. Um, so we were fortunate. So ever since we started the sandwich shop, the large pitas. Did it really well. I didn't expect them to do well. Mm -hmm. um, then the 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 morning rounds, not, ex not not knowing anything, did extremely well. And then the precise thin buns, what didn't do well? I'm trying to think. Um, you know what? We just came out with a square. Uh, the ciabatta. Square. Yeah, I saw. Yes, that. yeah. and that's that's uh, limping, and and I don't know if we'll try and push it. Mm. Uh, may let it uh, uh, expire with dignity. Yeah. Uh, what we're going to see. Yeah, it's interesting. I When I saw that, I thought, hmm, that's interesting because you changed the shape. Yeah. Right? And it's a completely different process. It was a completely really? different design. It was, yeah, it was, it was a challenge. And it's such a nice product. But with there, the shelf life was four days. So <laughs> it was a logistical <laughs> nightmare. And, 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 and we don't work. You know what? We could put in chemicals and extend it. Um, but we wouldn't do that. Yeah. I'd, rather, I'd rather not sell it than put chemicals right. in. So either they'll take it or they won't. It's a really nice product. But Yeah, yeah. you stick to your, your core and your, your foundational principles. Yeah, uh, 100%. What, um, again, like we were talking about the, the three people in that sandwich shop. What does the staffing look like today? What positions do you have uh, run the company with? So we're between 200 and 250 people. Um, it fluctuates based on seasons. Yeah, um, we'll have all the regular departments: uh, HR, uh, production, uh, production managers, uh, HR manager, accounting manager. So today, Guy and I are not involved in the day-to-day. -day. Yeah. mind you, we are. Th there are a lot of team members there. Um, have worked with us for so long; they know us very well. Yeah. We have uh, just just a bunch of really good people. So. On one hand, it grew so much. On the other, we still have the, the people who've been there for a while. So it's, it's good. So what has been a key hire for you that you remember, wow, this just changed my business life, that I was able uh, to take this off my hands? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, it happened several times. Yeah, tell me so, about it. So at the beginning, moving into the 4,000 square foot bakery, um, I remember mixing. So I'm mixing 
stuff. I have my connection to the phone because I was also the secretary and the order taker. Right. So I'm mixing dough and whenever I stop, run over, write whatever, answer and come back. And then I deliver it also. So my brother did the same and my father also. We were all kind of yeah. everything. So the best time of my life was hiring a mixer. Then I, dro I drove. The best, the best day of my life was hiring a driver to replace me and then I didn't deliver. At what that. point do you decide to hire that mixer and the driver? You know, I, I can't tell you. It wasn't, uh, it was just right. It was you're just when, like you were overwhelmed you or what when was you're, it? When you stabilize things. So when yeah. you're, things stabilize, then it's okay, what's next? And then it's okay, let me replace me. Uh, and then when a uh, really great moment was when we hired a lady to do customer service at the stores, which I thought nobody could, I thought I'm irreplaceable, but uh, she did a better job than me and, and be definitely better looking. And um, she, she was amazing. Uh, and that was the, just let me think and focus on the business. So those are the three ones that I remember. Uh, I mean, they were very real because they re released yeah. hours in my day. Yeah. After that, we always had people, but I'm always kind of choosing what area to focus yeah. in. Um, today, both my brother and I focus mostly on new business, uh, branding, some marketing, and uh, just the whole and and, and uh, non for profit, which is really important to us. Yeah, so the mixer, the driver, and the customer service were the biggest things that freed yeah. up your time. So after you hired the customer service person, what, now that you have more time, what did you do more of? Um, created more products, worked on branding, worked on improving packaging, um, putting thought into the product and into the company. Yeah. What were some of the, you mentioned before, some of the tough times? Like the ups and downs, sometimes that you were on the brink of whatever it was. So the last one was when we opened uh, the 90,000 square foot bakery. And I was I have a really good buddy who lives in Maui. So I go there once a year for just uh, around a week. The best, uh, amazing, amazing time. And I get a call from, uh, I think my brother, that the bank was calling in, uh, requesting us to put money and to, 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 to uh, support the ratios of our loan. Yeah. And uh, it was, oh my God, that, that was like the, the sky fell on me because you work, 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 and now you have to open a mortgage, take a mortgage on your house and put in. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're doing this for 16 years, like 15 years, right? So you think you're out of the wood, but you're not. I'm hearing about this for the past like hour and I'm already stressed. <laughs> I don't know how you do this for 20 years. Just have a good drink after this. Oh, God, a couple of good drinks. Yeah, That's been helping me for 20 years. And a one, a one <laughs> bun and a couple of good drinks. Go to Maui, have a drink. Be good. So you get this call in and Maui. And so, yeah, and then, you know, again, that, that when, when I saw the, the one bun uh, imitation at uh, the mm -hmm. store in Florida, that was the world collapse. Um, yeah, but, but today it's... So well, there was another one. Um, we were called... We were called into a supermarket uh, chain, which we did a lot of business with, and we were told that like, we're done within two months. And if we'd be really? done with them within two months, it would be out of business. Um, so yeah, so you go and work your magic on everybody. Why, and, why, why, you know, why were you going to be done in two months? Uh, because other bakeries can do mm. it. We couldn't distribute to the whole area, even though we developed the product. And it, was, it was a whole story. but. Um, Thankfully, there were really good people with there that uh, really appreciated our business and, um, and, and vouched for us and fought for us. And, uh, and we did. We were back in and we were never out. So it worked out well. You know, this may be a strange question, but I always think about this. You know, with the product in the grocery store, whatever, it's a bread or whatever it is. And after, let's say it's there for after its expiration, whatever, it's been two weeks. What do they do with it? Well, it's... For the, the, the commercial breads, it's two weeks. For our bread, it's after right. like so six it's like, days, like seven, seven day days. days. Right? We take it back. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough business model. So what they don't sell, you take back. So what do you do with it? Uh, it goes to feed, so to animal feed. Oh, okay. And, and you don't make money out of it. It's just You don't, you really? Damn. I know. It's horrible. Some, I guess, uh, breadcrumbs would make, but there are so many breadcrumbs you can sell, so... Pizza why can't you charge people for feed? Why why can't you charge? That's the business model. They uh, they, they just get it for free. Containers. They take care of it. They get rid of it. They they yeah. That's I don't know. 
piano on. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> I told you we're we're not bright people. No, it's uh, it's yeah the business. Chose someone's got to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what tools and software do you use to run your business? Um, What's key for you guys in the operations? We keep improving. That's that's my area. My yeah. brother deals with that, and um, but we have a, a system that brings everything together. It's it's not what was it called? I forget. Um, I forget. But it's it's um, it it keeps an eye on inventories and compares to dis to to, to shipments. Because you have a lot of moving parts. You know, you have like not, yeah. yeah, you have ingredients that you're coming in, ingredients that are going into the breads, ingredients that you've ordered. You have to keep all this stuff straight. Yeah, this is... we have a lot of products in the freezer and pallets that go yeah. out, come in. So yeah, it's a lot of moving parts. Uh, yeah. We have a, we have a good like. Again, that area is, is really kept done well. We have a really good CFO that uh, uh, makes sure the numbers match every end of month and uh, a good team counting and looking. And uh, We're not high tech, but uh, I think we're higher tech than most bakeries. Yeah. You know, Alon, since it's inspired insight, first of all, I appreciate all your sharing of these stories. This is, this is really the stories that don't get told. You know, all the tough times and the hard times it takes to keep a business running and going and successful, you know? And so I appreciate you sharing that s those stories about, you know, you, your dad working overnight and then you coming in the morning and working the rest of the time. It's, you know, that's the reality of things. Um, so since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask, what's been the lowest point and then what's been the proudest moment for you? What was uh -huh. the, I mean, you, you talked a little bit about some of the low points. Yeah, they covered. I think I covered them. The, so it's not. I mean, it's not that often, but you do. They did yeah. occur. So it's when the bank called. It's when yeah. we saw uh, our pro a product in, in the U.S. I'd say those were the two big ones. Um, the high points are, you know what? When when uh, honestly, when people send us emails, yeah, and we're not asking for them or or the, on Facebook or whatnot, and they tell us they love our product. That, and that happens almost on a daily basis. Um, we have, we have uh, a massive, massive uh, a database of end consumers that we communicate with, yeah. that we, we talk to, they talk to us. Uh, that, that's the best thing. I love it when people call and say they love our product. Yeah. What's been your favorite story that you've heard? Um, well, a recent one is uh, a mother. So we don't declare that we're not free. Um, just for legal reasons, yeah. but we'll say we're, we we cannot put the stamp on it. But we have no nuts in our bakery. Our team members are not allowed to bring any uh, nut products into our bakery um, or to even eat them at lunch. So we do, and and our suppliers don't hold the ingredients with nut products. Right. So that much we do. You, it's on you to decide if you want to use it or not. So this lady. Um, decided to, to try it, and her kid, who's really had really severe issues, uh, was so so happy that their kid they c could take it to school with them because because they were they were having issues with healthy snacks that don't have nuts in them or right. that they're not. It was amazing. It was just amazing. Yeah. And um, yeah, that, you affect people's the, lives. Yeah. It's the little things. Uh, we make a lot of products a day, and and we put in a lot of. Uh, no joke, a uh, good good intention into these products and and we hope that that whoever eats these products gets just only uh, uh, good uh, good stuff from them and and on a, almost on an energetic level so it's just we want people to be happy and and better once they eat obviously with a good taste and and the, the clean label yeah uh, but but that's part of how how we do things. And that's definitely our intention. Yeah, and the consumer one's big, but I want to know something also on selfish. Like you've worked for 20 years in this, working really hard. So what's something that you've celebrated, a win you celebrated because of, of how hard you worked with this company? Oh, I celebrate all the time. Yeah. So w all the time. Uh, when we went to San Francisco uh, for the show, so it's, you know, half work, half What not. show is it? What, what's uh, the the show? Fancy Food Show in okay. January. And... Um, I took uh, the product development team with us, and we went literally partying <laughs> through Napa Valley and San Francisco, and had a, a blast. 
um, I'm able today, you know, in two weeks I'm going to Maui again for a week for no reason. Um, just I felt like going and uh, two weeks ago I decided and I can do it. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, benefits. And, you know, uh, our father is amazing. He, his whole life, he had he, he ups and downs financially. Yeah. But throughout, he always lived his life fully and yeah. he enjoyed life. So he'd go to, a, you know, a little, a cheaper Chinese restaurant. I remember as children when we were not doing so well at times, we just, we'd go out and we'd have a great time in this hole in the wall. Today, we'll do the same thing and it will be either in a hole in the wall or not. Um, it's, 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 I think it's the at, it's how you look at it. And we, yeah, we're not yeah. materialistic. I'm not looking for uh, necessarily fancy cars. We're looking for financial independence, definitely. And we're, we're making headway towards that. But we, we don't care for huge houses, fast cars and stuff like that. Right, uh, right. At least I'm not. And um, not, not my family either. Um, we, we do, you know what? We, uh, yeah, we, we want to we want do, do have a positive impact. Yeah, and uh, and live well, and I think I think we're doing that. Yeah. We do well, a lot of work with with the with the community. Yeah, also. I saw that it's something you donate like thirty six thousand of some product per year or something. Or where did I? What was I reading? Um, that may be. Uh, so we all. I'd say the marathons, all the big marathons and runs in southern Ontario, which is fairly big in Toronto and yeah. area. Yeah, they all get our 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 uh, morning rounds in their bag. But that's the we support uh, we support programs breakfast programs in more than a hundred schools mm. in in the Greater Toronto area. We don't make money on it, so um, I, I think that that's ex extremely important. That th this is why we're doing these things is is it's such a pleasure to think of kids that can't afford their families can't afford breakfasts are are getting our morning round uh, um, in the morning and. Um, getting them to lunch or maybe further uh, it's really nice yeah and and we work also with entrepreneurs and younger entrepreneurs so that's like my best friends now are, are younger entrepreneurs or yeah less young now but um, just it's 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 a these it's it's more than just selling and money and stuff like that yeah besides you know with your dad I'm sure you you've worked with him for many years I'm curious what other lessons you learned so live life what other lessons did you learn from your dad working side by side? Um, for myself, he's yeah. a lot more chill than I am. I, I'm a little more stressed out, so I will, I will get stressed quickly and then go and charge the issue. Right. I think I should still go and charge the issue, but I should get stressed less. So I think, I think I'm, I'm a lot uh, calmer. I know I'm a lot calmer. I, otherwise, I, would, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be here. You seem calm, pretty calm to me, actually. Consi I'm much calmer now, yeah. Considering. I used to be very stressed, yeah. What um, have we not talked about so far that would be important? Some advice to entrepreneurs maybe thinking about getting into uh, the food industry? Um, I think the food industry is amazing. I think um, the more innovative you are, the better chances you have to succeed. Uh, I think that enjoy, enjoy the ride. It's uh, if you go to food shows, have a blast. Uh, have your customers feel, and, and the consumers notice it. It's like it's funny. People know if you were if you you have a good time. If there's good energy in your company, um, treat your people well. So our team members. Uh, yeah, I want you to talk about this a little bit. Yeah, this is important. It's super important because everything you make goes through their hands. Yeah. And and uh, you want them again. You don't want miserable people working for you. You don't you don't want that. Um, and and so our teams are whenever I remember the both guy and I and our father were super happy when we could give. And this is maybe ten years ago. The health benefits sadly, yeah. and it cost us a lot of money. Tons of money. Hundred like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and and but we were happy that we could offer it and that they have it um, when we are profitable. We have profit sharing, yeah. so it's also large sums of money. They, like that money doesn't have to go there; it could go into our pockets. Um, but we're very, very happy. Not that means that nothing goes. We we do benefit from business, but we want the people working with us mm -hmm. um, to benefit. So yeah. I remember uh, just this this year, uh, in December, I had a, one of the ladies in the office. She was woohoo! Just after we whatever declared, 
Uh, and, and I said, hey, what's happening? She said, I'm happy. I said, why are you happy? She goes, I'm happy and Canada Goose is going to be happy. So she was able to now go and buy a Canada Goose coat, which costs like eight to nine hundred bucks. Really? Holy cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was so happy. And this is, you know, these are not high, they're average income or lower than average because of the, the job itself. Um, so that was so nice. It was just nice to see. How did you decide that the profit sharing component? We, because we always wanted to, got, we, we discussed in the past. We were thinking, how is there a way to even have shared ownership of the company? Because right, right. um, again, without them, you know it how important exist. it was. Yeah. It doesn't exist without them. Uh, but then, because of legalities and lack of control or control issues, and it just always got complex with lawyers. So he said, "Screw this. You know, let's just." Let's just we have we, we'll make the decision uh, when we can and when we can we uh, we, we do it so we have a, a little formula that we follow and that that dictates when and how much uh, it's done and it's done then every, every year and we, everybody's familiar with how the business is doing during the year so yeah it's it's very important it, yeah I remember it's in a few articles actually they mentioned that and I uh, it really stuck out. Um, how do you come to that structure? Do you, there are certain professionals that are they're experts at that? Let's say someone wants to actually create that. Like, Alana, that sounds like an amazing idea. Where do you start with coming up with the right formula for you? So, yeah, the formula is simple. It's, uh, it just has to do with our, our profitability. And then there's a breakdown of team members by number of years and by position. And we attribute different numbers to them, plug in a number, and then it shoots out. Um, the numbers so and and uh, the the percent we decide of a percentage of the profit that will go out and uh, and, and and that's it and that, that can vary it all depends yeah. on is there a standard when you're doing the research for it? is there a standard that no. people no no we I didn't see any standard yeah uh, we were looking if if anybody knows uh, of uh, like and again I don't know if we'll go there or not but I'd like to know about uh, a way of sharing ownership of a company with with team members but without it affecting your decision making ability and right. your, your freedom because yeah. uh, that we won't compromise that. yeah it's, it's definitely yeah. Yeah. well on this has been fantastic i appreciate it and everyone should check out where should we point people towards i mean i have ozry bakery o-z-e-r-y-b-a-k-e-r-y.com any other places that they should should go to check out no, um, that's that's it. Uh, we're we're very busy on Facebook. We're busy on Instagram. Uh, we we have a nice new uh, site uh, for three weeks now. So go go check it out, and um, yeah, should yeah. Get, and, and, go, and go taste our products because you know yeah. a screen a screen is uh, boring, uh, but a really tasty toasted morning round. Um, yeah, what's your favorite the favorite product and what do you put on it? I really like I really like our muesli, and I like to warm it in a toaster oven, cut it open, put a little cream cheese, some old cheddar cheese, and eat it, and maybe some really ripe tomato, and then eat that. Uh, it's really nice with also I like the the, the certain nut like a, a like an almond butter uh, or a sunflower butter on top of it also is extremely good in the morning. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so those, those yeah, are great. I ask at the end because I didn't want to get really hungry in the very beginning of this. And um, I'll send you a box of products. How about that? I'll go to the store. And I think we already have them, actually. Uh, awesome. Yeah, but Alan, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Brilliant. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same right now. I feel like a hundred grand